Thank you. I would like to um, thank both you and the ranking member for having today's hearing and also to uh, Ms. Pretty and Ms. Clark. I want to thank you both for joining us here today. My first question has to do with uh, the measuring of success for the Endangered Species Act. My Republican colleagues often point out that only 39 species have ever been delisted from the Endangered Species Act after experiencing a population recovery. However, a different measure for the Endangered Species Act in terms of how few species that have been listed have gone extinct. Ms. Clark, can you elaborate why the second measure where you look at how few of these endangered of these species have been listed um, have actually gone extinct uh, is a better picture of success for the Endangered Species Act? Thank you. Certainly, thank you, Senator. Uh, the Endangered Species Act is, is a law of last resort. The, the species come onto the Endangered Species Act and are protected by that statute only after states and other, state and other local authorities and, and uh, protections have failed. So oftentimes by the time a species is listed and protected by the federal government, it's in pretty dire shape and, and bumping up against extinction. So, so that typically happens after decades of decline. So we shouldn't expect species to just flip and turn around. It's not like flipping on a light switch when, when the Endangered Species Act comes into its protected status. What is remarkable about the number of species on the list is how many of them have continued to sustain knowing that we got to them almost too late. And so the fact that, that so few have gone extinct after being protected by the the Endangered Species Act is a remarkable measure of success. And the expectation that species would recover overnight or even quickly given the dire straits most are in by the time they're protected by the law is an inappropriate measure uh, for sure and uh, often affected by a lack of funding that is um, invested to allow those species to, to begin their recovery journey. Thank you. The uh, Endangered Species Act provides a critical framework, as you were saying, to, to protect endangered and threatened species and their habitats. And a study in 2018, I understand, found that one fourth of listed endangered species lack final recovery plans. Of species that do have plans, half of them took more than five years to finalize after a species was listed, and half of all recovery plans are now more than 20 years old. In order to ensure that the Endangered Species Act can provide meaningful protection to endangered and threatened species, it needs secure and sufficient funding to make sure that these plans can be completed, updated, and kept relevant, and that the work of saving these species can be completed. Can each member of the panel briefly speak to the role funding plays in conserving these species? And I'd like to turn over the remainder of my time to the panelists to answer this question. Thank you. Thank you so very much, uh, Senator. I appreciate it. Thank you. I guess I'll go ahead. This is Lisa Pretty uh, to address that question. Yes, I think that funding is essential to being able to successfully recover these species. But again, I feel that um, in many cases, it has been the states to show on, on their shoulders to fund the efforts that are made for these species recovery and um, often the federal funding just isn't there to provide all the resources that are needed for each individual species. And I would add uh, that um, the Endangered Species Act has been severely underfunded for decades, and that speaks to both the state need as well as the federal need. So states certainly uh, uh, need more resources, as does the federal government. And the, the most recent evaluation uh, suggests that less than 25% of the recovery funding that's needed, that scientists say is needed for the species that are listed, is has been provided at either the federal or the state level. And so um, this is, is, is pretty dire. We can't expect re, uh, species to recover without investment. The states are doing the best they can. The federal government's doing the best they can. But this is really basically a, an issue about investment and whether or not we're going to um, address this national commitment that, frankly, is a rounding error of the budget that is deployed for um, uh, a big part of the government. 